basically we're going to start with the concept of cosmic sociology. So you know about regular sociology on a basic level. Now take that and expand it to the cosmos. So there are two tenets presented in the dark forest of, of cosmic sociology. So one of them is that the goal of civilization is to expand. The second tenet is that there is a limited amount of energy and resources in the universe. So when you take these two tenets and you extrapolate, what you get to is that civilizations in the universe must compete for resources. Just like, you know, different species in a forest on Earth, in a dark forest. So the implication here is that if you make yourself visible in this dark forest, if other civilizations are aware of you within this dark forest, then you are exposing yourself to a malicious attack. And there's more of a reason for why this is. Another big reason that's introduced and explained in the book is called the chain of suspicion. And without explaining everything about it, essentially the chain of suspicion says that two different civilizations on two different worlds from totally different evolutionary tracks can never be 100% sure that the other civilization that they are coming into contact with or witnessing is, is malicious or not malicious. So the only logical solution is to attack on sight. That is the concept of the dark forest. The universe is actively hostile. Any civilization that reveals itself will be ultimately wiped out by a more powerful civilization shielded in the dark forest that's more wise to hide. So in nature, that's the purpose of things like camouflage. If you are unseen, then you can, you can get away. You won't be hunted by the bigger predators that want your energy, that want your resources. If you can manage to stay hidden, and a lot of animals do this in different ways, and in the series talks about there's different ways to do this cosmically. You know, some animals like dig holes and hide in the ground. Some animals hide very far up in trees. Some animals blend in. So there's various ways to hide but being exposed is dangerous. So this evokes an immediate sense of fear, obviously, because we've been sending out radio signals and all sorts of signals into outer space for years and years and years now, decades and decades and decades, now exposing ourselves to the dark forest. Maybe something would notice. We have no idea who's listening out there in the dark. So in the simplest terms, that is the dark forest. You can check out my video, What Makes the Forest Dark, if you want a more complex explanation of what the dark forest hypothesis is. I have often thought of Remembrance of Earth's Past as Shishinlu's answer to the Fermi Paradox, where the Fermi Paradox essentially asks, why, given the high probability of advanced extraterrestrial life, do we find ourselves in a universe where conclusive evidence of such life remains elusive? The math is in favor of intelligent life being fairly common, but the evidence suggests otherwise. And as you said, Shishinla presents the dark forest theory as a central idea in the story, proposing that advanced civilizations in the universe tend to remain silent and concealed to protect themselves from potential threats posed by other advanced civilizations. Now, do you think the dark forest theory is the reason why we haven't made any contact with any other forms of intelligent life? Well, before we get to that, I want to point out that there is a book that came out a couple of decades ago called The Killing Star by Charles Pellegrino and George Zabrowski that has a very similar idea that's basically the dark forest. So Shishinlu wasn't the first person to think of this idea. It's been an idea that's been out there for a while, but Shishinlu definitely, definitely like expands upon it a lot. Now as to whether or not I think this is actually true, the scary thing about the dark forest hypothesis is that when you really understand it, it seems so incredibly reasonable. It seems like that's totally what's happening. It seems like we're totally beyond the shadow of a doubt, but it's only reasonable if everything that we think we know about the universe is actually true. There could be things that we don't even understand about the universe that make it so like the dark forest is just like totally doesn't make any sense at all, right? Um, and there's also other possibilities like, you know, we could be in a simulation right now where like only like a part of our galaxy or maybe just our galaxy is being simulated and like 
maybe there are rules in the simulation that prevent simulations that prevent civilizations from interacting, something like that. And then there's the possibility of the great filter as well. Have you heard of the idea of the great filter? Oh yeah. So basically for people that haven't heard of the great filter, it's just basically the idea that there is some sort of barrier that present that prevents civilizations from getting to the galactic stage. And that could just be the hostile nature of the cosmic environment itself. The fact that it's really, really hard to cross space. It could be just due to the fact that it takes a really, really long time to cross space and something goes wrong before that point in time. It could be because maybe civilizations of intelligent beings just trend towards self-destruction. Maybe we all nuke ourselves before then. It could be because most civilizations just don't see the need to travel that far. Maybe like they don't see the need to expend the energy and maybe they're more fine just um, inhabiting their own little solar system and there's really no point in going any further. Um, so there's all sorts of reasons there could be a great filter, a barrier that prevents civilizations from getting to the stage where they need or want to interact with other civilizations. And then also, I could be a brain in the vat, you know what I mean? I could not, all of this could just be in my mind right now. Um, so there, there's so many reasons that we might not be seeing aliens right now, but I under, I totally get why the Dark Forest seems so reasonable and it seems like if you extrapolate from everything that we see on Earth, and maybe the universe is like that as well, but like I said, there's all sorts of variables, variables that we might not be considering. And the universe is so vast. And one of the things that I always think about is that we can only see a little bit of it at any point in time. You know, we, we, we're, we're really, really looking through a tiny, 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 tiny window. And then we're, all, we're also only seeing the universe in certain ways. You know, it's like my favorite quote in Doom ever. What senses do we lack that we cannot see and hear a hidden world all around us? Who knows what's out there and who knows like why any of it even exists or how any of it even exists. We don't even know what this is. This, this, this cosmic soup that we're all floating around in that it just exists for no reason. We don't know why it's here. It could be some great machine that we don't understand. So I can't say for sure that I believe in the dark forest hypothesis even though I totally totally get it and maybe that's just me being afraid of it that I'm just kind of, I'm kind of, I'm trying to <laughs> push it away and say no that definitely can't be it because I'm, I, I, I obviously I want that Star Trek future you want to make contact <laughs> exactly I, I want I want to hang out with the Vulcans I don't want them to be mean I want to share technologies yeah. and I'm a nerd you know I, I, I want that so 